please. So um, please make sure that you go ahead and grab your paper, some pen or pencil or uh, something to write with so you can take notes. Remember that if this channel is helping you, please make sure that you subscribe so we can get this information out so the whole world can see what you're doing. Um, don't gatekeep, okay? Because the algorithm depends on you subscribing and sharing and liking, okay? So please make sure you do that. Um, but again, make sure you have your paper, pen, and pencil. Um, and let's go ahead and jump into part four of the medication series. Okay, so the first slide talks about drug to nutrition interactions. So when we think about drug to nutrition interactions, we are thinking about um, drugs having an issue with food, right? We're trying to see what food causes what reactions when we're thinking about the drug, okay? Um, and so when we're looking at these drug classifications, um, we want to know which drug is used to treat what, and then also, um, which drug is saying that it should not be taken with milk or food or should be taken with food or milk, excuse me, to avoid stomach distress. One of the common side effects of drugs is going to be stomach distress, okay? So anytime you see that as your answer choice, you can pretty much bet that it's stomach distress um, or some type of stomach upset, something like that. That's probably going to be your answer. Um, but for this particular question, we are looking at NSAIDs, okay? What are NSAIDs? That's aspirin, naproxen, and ibuprofen, okay? Um, I know for a fact, honey, if I get a headache or anything, um, any type of pain, my go-to is Motrin, which is ibuprofen. Um, so go ahead and write that down. It is NSAIDs. And what does NSAIDs stand for? Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug is what NSAIDs stand for, okay? And what are NSAIDs? Aspirins, ibuprofen, and naproxen, okay? So make sure you are taking notes and you're jotting this down. Um, the next one says indication of medication. So now we want to think about what does this drug use to treat? What does it normally treat? Um, and it says blank is indicated for hyperlipidemia, and it's taken once a day, right? Um, so hyperlipidemia, let's just break this word down. So the word hyper, we all know that if somebody is hyper, that means they can't stop jumping and bouncing off these walls. Honey, you all on this sofa, you done bounced off this sofa, now you bouncing off these chairs, these kids. Um, and so when you think about hyperlipidemia, I want you to think about high cholesterol. The word lipid should trigger in your brain that you're thinking about cholesterol. Okay, so hyperlipidemia means that they have high cholesterol. And so someone who has high cholesterol is going to take a drug that ends in statin. You will see here in letter A, uh, multiple choice, I have underlined statin. Okay, all statins are used to treat high cholesterol. Write this down because you will see this um, on your exams. Statin. Okay, hyperlipidemia is high cholesterol, and statins, atorvastatin, is taken once a day, okay? Atorvastatin is taken once a day. Uh, drug to nutrition. So here we are again talking about um, drugs and foods, um, and we're talking about how to avoid these type of different drug uh, reactions and side effects. Um, one of the things I want you to pay close attention to is the key words and the highlighting that I'm doing. When you get ready to take your board exam, this is test taking strategy number one, make sure that you are highlighting key words. Key words are typically four, three, four, or five words out of the entire problem, depending on how long the question is, that is going to help point you to the right answer. Okay, so you should be highlighting four words. Now, if you're doing a math problem that's different, but there's no math here. So if you're highlighting you know, it's eight words in the question and you got five highlighted, that's a little too much. Um, you want to just use words that are going to point you to the right answer. So here we're talking about foods and wines that should be avoided if the patient is taking which of the following drug classification, okay? So again, these are drug classes and the correct answer for this is C. C is used to treat depression 
And with depression, when someone is depressed, they don't need to take, or when someone is depressed and they're taking drug classifications, um, seeds, then they don't want to use food and wines that could interact with the medication that they are taking. Because remember, our overall goal in pharmacy is to do no harm. What is our overall goal in pharmacy? Do no harm, which means that we're trying to reduce every medication error there is possible. We're trying to ensure that the patient and the, and the, the, the customer is being served with the utmost care and that when they leave, they understand how to take their medicine, they understand what interacts negatively with their medicine, and they know what is expected from the medication. What is it supposed to do? How is it supposed to make me feel better? Those are the things that we in healthcare are responsible when it comes to our customers and our patients, okay? Um, baby, let's clap it up for David. Let, I heard somebody say, I ain't seen nobody shout out the men. Okay, baby, look, we, we, at LW, we don't show no favoritism. We helping boys, girls, men, women, them, they, whoever you are, we're helping you become certified and we're helping you get to the next level and to achieve your dreams and your goals. When David started with us, he had no background in healthcare. He didn't know what he, you know, what he necessarily wanted to do in healthcare. He just went out on a limb. And um, while he was with us, he ended up having a baby and becoming a first time dad. And so we're so, so we're so, so proud of him for, for, for so many reasons. And we're here to celebrate him. And so if you can, let's clap it up for David. Go, David. This can be you too, friend. Don't start to get down and, you know, doubt yourself. Keep your head up. Um, narrow therapeutic index drugs. So narrow therapeutic index drugs are... NTI drugs, and this is also something that you need to know if you're in healthcare. NTI drugs are drugs that requires lab work to be done when the patient is on this particular drug. Levothyroxine is an NTI drug and it does require lab work. And so what that means is while that patient is taking that medication, the doctor is checking the panels. They're making sure that the lab, the blood work is flowing properly. We want to make sure that this drug is helping the patient and not harming the patient because what is our job again? To do no harm, to reduce medication errors, okay? And so with that being said, we are checking this medication, checking the patient, that's what the doctor is doing. They're making sure that the patient vitals and everything are up to where they need to be. Um, and levothyroxine is used to treat hypothyroidism, okay? Hypothyroidism. And so basically that's to treat the thyroid. And I did put a picture here because I want you to see what that looks like. Um, hypo means low. So first we talked about hyper, which is you can't sit down. Low means that, baby, you don't have no energy to get up, Okay. So if it's hypo, it's low, and then that word thyroid should connect you to thyro and levothyroxine. So when you see thyro and hyperthyroidism, and then you see thyro and levothyroxine, hopefully you can connect the two to see, oh, okay, this is what is, baby, that's the right answer, levothyroxine. Look, don't play with it, don't play with it, don't play with it, okay? Don't let these drugs trick you up. This is just a one-time thing. I always tell my friends, remember, you are only trying to do this one time, honey. And then after that, you can move on with your happy life, okay? Your, your real good happy life, because it's going to be real good once you once you finish this and once you get to the other side of it, okay? Um, indications for dietary supplements. Indications for dietary supplements. It says, which of the following vitamins is water soluble and maintains the integrity of the mucous membranes in the metabolic en energy pathways, right? Uh, or metabolic energy pathways. I knew I didn't say that right. I said metabolic and made me stop. Um, I think it's metabolic. Um, energy pathways, okay? So when we think about vitamins, we know that these are dietary supplements and then we know that there are some water-soluble vitamins, right? And then we also know that some vitamins are used to produce energy and to put the energy out there and to make sure that the patient or the customer is feeling energetic. Um, when we think about these water-soluble vitamins, uh, one of the things I just learned recently is how fruits and vegetables are very hydrated. Um, 
very, very hydrated. And it makes sense because they're considered water, water soluble, which, you know, you can get vitamin, vitamin B. I'll just go ahead and tell you vitamin B from broccoli and, you know, avocado and oranges and things like that. And so um, I always thought that water was what you needed to hydrate you. And I'm not saying don't drink your water. Look, baby, I ain't going to say, Lindsay said at LW, don't drink your water. The devil is a lie. I ain't say that. What I am saying is hydration does come from fruits and vegetables. And I didn't realize that, but I've been doing some work and just kind of, you know, on my own little journey. Okay. Um, and so anywho, for this particular water soluble, we are talking about vitamin B12. Write this down. Vitamin B12 is a water, excuse me, vitamin B2, vitamin B2, let the record state, vitamin B2 is a water soluble uh, vitamin, okay? And it helps produce energy, water soluble vitamin, and it helps produce energy, okay? Control substance four. Now, when we think about these control substance we are thinking about drugs that are, I guess, monitored, if, if you will. Drugs that are monitored by the um, DEA. These drugs are monitored in the pharmacy. We are making sure that we are keeping them um, where they need to be. We're also keeping tabs on them. We're not giving too many refills because we know for Schedule 4, you can only get five refills within a six-month period. Write that down. Um, Cause some of y'all want to know well, why I can't get another refill on my uh, Ambien, baby. Because uh, Ambien is a Schedule Four and it only allows five refills within a six month period. So yes, Miss Jackie, you got to go and get a new script. Um, and so Schedule Fours require that um, the doctor does not write for more than five refills. Okay, and then insomnia is where the person is struggling to sleep. And it says, which one of these drugs is indicated for insomnia? Um, and insomnia, um, the drug that is used to treat insomnia is letter D. And that is the generic for Ambien, okay? Um, Ambien is a Schedule Four drug. And, um, you know, it does have some precautionary things that we want to bring to the to customers and to the um, patient attention because we don't want them driving. We don't want them doing anything crazy while they're under the influence of Ambien, okay? Um, you can read more about that too and just Googling. And if that's the drug you're on, definitely make sure you get that information from your pharmacist or your doctor. Um, dietary supplements. So it says, which of the following herbal products may be used as a laxative? Keywords, herbal products and laxative. Mm. Herbal product. So this means this is something that is natural, right? This is going to be something that allows the body to flow naturally and to do what it needs to do um, uh, and what's, what's necessary to eliminate um, waste, okay? And the letter, um, the answer for this is letter A. Letter A is an herbal product that is used as a laxative, okay? Um, make sure that when you are taking notes, that you are writing down the key words and then that you are also writing down the um, the answer because you can go and do further investigation if this is something you've never seen before. Um, chemotherapy in breast cancer. Chemotherapy in breast cancer is always a very, very, very touchy subject for me. Um, I lost a friend of mine to breast cancer um, maybe seven years ago, um, she was young, she was young, she was young and she had breast cancer. She had metastatic breast cancer. And um, and so this is always a very touchy subject for me. So if you are over the age of 40 and you need, you know, you have not had a mammogram, please, 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 please go get a mammogram because you just don't know what you don't know, right? Um, so make sure that you take care of yourself. That is a part of self-care and self-love. I know we go get our hair done, our nails done. We go get haircuts. We go get new outfits. We go wash the car. We pull up on a Sunday. Um, and maybe that's what we're doing in H-Town. But um, also, please make sure that you are taking care of your health and taking care of yourself, okay? When we think about chemotherapeutic drugs, we are thinking about drugs that are used to treat cancer. 
This one is used specifically for breast cancer and the answer is letter D, okay? D as in dog, D as in dog, letter D. Uh, I pledge, baby, let's talk about the I pledge. Put your right hand up, okay? Cross your heart and hope, hope not to die, right? <laughs> um, they say, I cross my heart and hope to die. Look, baby, we ain't dying no time soon. Let's keep it positive and let's make sure that we continue to do what we need to do. So I pledge says, that if a person is taking a drug that they are saying, I am committed to preventing pregnancy. I'm also aware of the suicidal ideations that comes with this drug. I'm aware that it may make me feel depressed. I'm aware that it may, you know, cause my mental health to go a little off the rocker. And I'm okay with that because I am trying to treat the acne. That's what the I pledge says. The I pledge told Stacy that if you want to take this drug, you got to make sure that you don't get pregnant while you're while you're on this drug. And you got to make sure that you are paying attention to your mental health because it could cause suicidal ideation. It could cause depression. It could cause, you know, di different thoughts that you didn't have before that you're like, OK, where is this coming from? OK, um, this is a topical drug. This is a topical drug and it is indicated for acne. OK. The I and I pledge also matches the I and isotretinoin, okay? Isotretinoin is the drug that is under the I pledge, um, uh, I pledge commitment, I guess, in a sense. And it is used to treat acne, but although it's used to treat acne, it can cause some other side effects and it can cause just different depression and just different, you know, adverse effects or side effects in a sense, not adverse effects because we're aware of them, but side effects that could cause the patient to have and experience some different, different feelings that they've never felt before. And so while they're on this drug, they do have the pledge that they won't get pregnant and that they are aware of um, the side effects. So please make sure you write this down. Isotrentinin is... Um, I pledge drug and the patient cannot get pregnant or they should also be aware of the mental health um, side effects that will come with this drug. Proper storage of medications. So when we think about storing medications, we know some are stored at room temperature, some are stored at the, in the freezer, some are stored on um, in the refrigerator, some are stored, you know, um, we said room temperature, the freezer in the refrigerator, and some are just stored, I guess, at, at warm temperature maybe. Um, but for this particular drug, this drug is kept in the refrigerator and it is used to treat glycoma. Glycoma is a condition that affects the eye. It affects the eye, it affects vision, right? And so this particular drug needs to be kept in the refrigerator. One of the things I want you to remember, friend, is when you are taking this, um, this taking your exam, you may be asked about room temperatures and different temperatures for a proper storage of medication. If you can write down that the refrigerator is between 35 to 38 and just start to try to memorize some of these temperatures, it will save you some time on the exam. So write that down, okay? Um, and then also for this particular um, treatment, the answer is B as in boy, B as in boy. B is used to treat glycoma, okay? B is used to treat glycoma and it must be kept in the refrigerator. All right, y'all. Well, we have gotten to the end again. It is another beautiful Sunday and you have committed yourself to this wonderful process and I'm so proud of you. Please continue to hit me up. Um, you guys are checking in in the comments telling me that you passed. Y'all are checking in and telling me what you want to see. Remember right now we're on this top 200 medication series. And so right now I'm not adding anything new to the content because I want to get through all of the drugs because that is 40% of your exam. But once we get through those drugs, then we can start incorporating everything else. I had a student the other day who took her test and there were only two math questions on the exam. So if you're spending a lot of your time focusing on math, please make sure that you are um, dividing your attention equally because you never know what exam you're going to get. There are four different versions of the test, okay? Um, I am on TikTok, I am on Facebook, I am on Instagram. 
I am everywhere you are, okay? I am going to drop my links in the comments below. Please hit me up. I want to hear from you. I want to see you. I want you to see me. I want us to continue to work together because you are on the path to getting to where you want to be. This is your year for success, okay, friend? Continue to love on you. Continue to trust in you. And I will see you next week, same time, same place. Bye.